Sept. 2. UPI Hurricane Dorian roared over the Bahamas on Sunday and Monday, making landfall on several islands with punishing sustained winds of 185 miles per hour and gusts that reached speeds of 225 miles per hour. As of 2 p.m. Monday, the storm's movement had slowed to a plodding one mile per hour, moving west-northwest, with a turn toward the northwest expected in the next day, the National Hurricane Center said. Maximum sustained winds had dropped to 150 miles per hour, but the storm remained a dangerous Category 4. The hurricane will then move dangerously close to the Florida east coast late tonight through Wednesday evening, the center's public advisory said, and then move dangerously close to the Georgia and South Carolina coasts on Wednesday night and Thursday. As of Monday afternoon, hurricane force winds extended outward up to 45 miles from the center and tropical storm force winds extended up to 140 miles. Dorian proved to be a historic hurricane, the strongest ever during modern record-keeping to make landfall in the Bahamas and, with sustained 185 mph winds, it has been the second strongest hurricane, by wind speed, ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. The hurricane, will cause a prolonged period of devastating winds and storm surge over Grand Bahama Island, the center said. Dorian now stands behind only Hurricane Allen, the strongest storm ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. Allen thundered over the Gulf of Mexico in August 1980 and achieved sustained wind speeds of 190 miles per hour before making landfall near the U.S.-Mexico border. Dorian made its initial landfall at Elbow K. Abacos, in the Bahamas. The Eye of Dorian then made a second landfall on Great Abaco Island near Marsh Harbor in the Bahamas. A third landfall came later on Sunday night, the eye encroaching the eastern end of Grand Bahama Island. Maximum sustained winds were 185 miles per hour during the first two landfalls, dropping to 180 miles per hour for the third. Gusts of 225, as Aki weather extreme meteorologist Reed Timmer noted, were equivalent to the winds of an EF4 tornado. I have seen utter devastation here in Marsh Harbor. We are surrounded by water with no way out, ABC News correspondent Marcus Moore told the news station. Absolute devastation, there really are no words, it is pure hell here on Marsh Harbor. In the northern part of the Bahamas, since 1851 the Treasure Cay area in the Abacos Bahamas has experienced three major hurricanes, all of which were Category 3 hurricanes, according to the NWS Charleston. Dorian, currently a Category 5, is the strongest by far to affect the area. Hurricane Andrew in 1992 is the only Category 5 hurricane to pass through the Bahamas. In Freeport on Grand Bahama Island, residents hunkered down in a church that was being used for a shelter. Photos and videos surfacing on social media showed powerful winds whipping palm trees, flooding and some severe damage to residences. This is probably the saddest and worst day for me to address the Bahamian people, the Bahamas Prime Minister Hubert Minnis wrote in a Twitter post Sunday afternoon. Please pray for us. Late Sunday night, the first recorded death in Abaco following Hurricane Dorian was confirmed. Seven-year-old Lachino McIntosh drowned, and his sister remains missing, according to the Bahamas Press. His death occurred after his family attempted to relocate their home. In addition to some places in the Bahamas seeing up to 24 inches of rain, severe storm surge could be devastating. With Dorian packing winds of 185 miles per hour, life-threatening storm surge will also plague the northern Bahamas in the coming days. Storm surge across the northern Bahamas is expected to exceed 10 feet in some areas.
This will pose a serious threat to both life and property across much of the northern Bahamas, Aki weather meteorologist Brandon Buckingham said. Meanwhile, the first mandatory evacuation orders were issued on Sunday for St. John's County, St. Lucie County and Martin County and parts of Palm Beach County, including where President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago Resort is situated. The Miami Herald reported the Palm Beach County evacuations are for those in low-lying areas and that the county began to open shelters on Sunday. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis suspended traffic tolls after the first evacuation orders went into effect at 1 p.m. Hurricane Dorian is one of the strongest storms that's ever threatened Florida. If you live in a county with evacuation orders, please heed the call, DeSantis implored Floridians in a post on Twitter. Trump also has been issuing warnings about the power of Dorian. It seems to be one of the biggest hurricanes we've ever seen, and that's a problem, Trump told reporters outside the White House on Sunday, discussing the changing forecast for where Dorian might make landfall in the U.S. It seems to be going up toward South Carolina, toward North Carolina. Georgia's going to be hit. Alabama's gonna get a piece of it, Trump added. He posted a similar statement on Twitter, as well. The latest weather forecasts indicate that Alabama will not see any impacts from Dorian. The five-day forecast shows sunshine and temperatures in the 90s for Birmingham for the first week of September. But from Florida up through Georgia and the Carolinas, people were on edge. States of emergency have been in place for days. Forecasters say Dorian could still deliver a glancing blow to the east coast of Florida, bringing hurricane conditions from Jupiter Inlet to the Volusia Brevard County line and tropical storm conditions up and down much of coast, even if its eye stays offshore and never makes landfall there. Beyond that, landfall is not out of the question for the Carolinas as Dorian slowly marches up the east coast this week. In places along the Florida coast like Melbourne Beach, residents continue to hold the breath. A lot of folks have boarded up. You see the shutters up, folks not ready to believe that this is going to stay off the coast, AccuWeather National weather reporter Jonathan Petramala said. Florida began to feel the outlying bands of the storm. Dorian is still expected to track dangerously close to the Florida coast early this week. A landfall in the state of Florida is not out of the realm of possibility, Buckingham said. Landfall or not, many coastal communities from West Palm Beach north to the Georgia border could see hurricane force wind gusts. Let's block ads. Why?